Hey, what's up? This is Todd Smith, and I'm back with another tutorial. My last iPad tutorial, I showed you my hardware side. I showed you all the connections, adapters, how I connected to my audio interface, my MIDI controller, my hardware, and all that stuff. This time, I'm going to jump into the software side, show you how to turn the iPad Pro into a standalone groove box. You can easy, easily expand it to do the hardware side with this setup. Again, in this setup is going to be all software to just show off the software side of the iPad environment. Just like the hardware setup, the heart of my setup on the iPad is Audio bus. Audio bus allows me to tie everything together in a manner that I like. Right now, I have a drum machine, which is patterning, mod step, which is running sequencing to iOS Synths, which is Sunriser and the FM4. And then I have the Korg ARP iOS Synth, which has an individual delay on its line to amp up its sound a little bit and that I'll be playing live so it's on its own line and on top of that I added another line from my microphone which is playing right now the cool thing about audio bus is you can add as many lines as you want when you add in the line you can add in any iOS software synth that you want and on top of that you can add in inputs if you have an audio interface that is connected with multiple inputs. This makes the audio bus the heart of my setup. I use ModStep for sequencing my iOS synths because it can sequence a huge variety of iOS synths and it's very easy to use, very intuitive, and it has a very long sequencer. If you notice when you're in other synths and other iOS programs, you have a transport over here and that is the audio best transport. It allows you to jump around the iOS environment without using your home button, which is really convenient. So if I want to go to my delay, I can go to my delay. If I want to go to mod step, I can go to mod step. If I want to go to the Korg synth, I can go to the Korg synth. I can go back to audio bus from audio bus anywhere I wish. So it allows you to jump around the iOS system without using the home button and scrolling, which is pretty cool. You will still create crackling and sound anomalies if you try to cycle through various programs while using the iOS system very heavy. That's why I recommend getting a hardware controller so you can map all these synths and parameters to hardware and control them via your hands and not have to cr cycle through all of these iOS synths and create sound anomalies and crackles. That's when this thing becomes a true standalone groove box is when you have a nice iPad set up like this software wise coupled with a nice hardware controller. As an example, I could play this lead live on this keyboard I showed you here, but I'm just going to play it on the screen just to have some fun. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like this tutorial, if you like jams, if you like anything that is based around hardware synths, iOS synths, software synths in general, subscribe to this channel because many more videos are on the way. Thank you for watching and have a great day, YouTube.